Having introduced our notations for big O, big omega, and big theta, we will now begin showing to how we can develop these proofs to show formally that a given function is in big O of another function, how a given function is in big omega of another function, and how a given function is in big theta of another function. We'll develop an algorithmic approach for doing this because that will allow us to solve lots of different problems in a way that is consistent. However, there are other ways of doing this that are equally valid. So for our first example, we're going to look at showing that some parabola is in big O of n squared. The technique I use for doing this is I start by writing down the given function, 2n squared plus 3n plus 4. You then identify what is the highest order term. In this case, that would be n squared. And what are the lower order terms? I'll write down those phrases in case you've never heard them before. This is the highest order term. Highest order term, meaning it grows the fastest. The other two terms are what we call lower order terms. Lower order terms. Our first rule for developing this big O notation is going to be when you give an, an expression like this, you will replace every lower order term with an equivalent higher order term. So let's write that down as a rule. Rule number one, replace LOT for lower order terms with, I'll write this in quotes, equivalent higher order terms. What do I mean by that? I'll write down the two things I'm going to observe here. The first one is that 3n is less than or equal to 3n squared. Is that the case? Well, let's do some algebra and check if that's actually true. I have an inequality. Remember that the n we are dealing with are assumed to be like an array size or an input to an algorithm. They're assumed to be positive numbers. So I can divide by n in that expression and not have any concern. And I'm also going to divide by 3. So if I divide by 3n on both sides, I get that n is greater than or equal to 1. So that inequality is true so long as n is greater than or equal to 1. This is going to help me identify that constant n naught that we talked about in the definition. Our second fact we are going to observe is that 4 is less than or equal to 4n squared. Hopefully you look at that and go, well, yeah, of course it is. One's a number and one goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So clearly, eventually, that's true. Well, when is eventually? I divide by 4 on both sides and I have 1 less than or equal to n squared. And then you might need to be careful here. Only certain functions work well with inequalities. In particular, increasing functions work well with inequalities. And n squared is not always increasing. It's only increasing for positive values. Thankfully, we only care about positive values. So I can take a square root here just fine. And that requires that n is greater than or equal to 1. So both of my claims actually require n greater than or equal to 1. So if I want to use those facts, I'm already assuming that my input n is of a certain size. So how do I use those facts? I take the expression... 2n squared plus 3n plus 4. And I'm going to bound it above. I'm going to make it bigger by replacing 3n with 3n squared and 4 with 4n squared. So I keep the 2n squared untouched, change the 3n to 3n squared, as I just said, and change the 4 to 4n squared. However, that's not always true. As we said, it's only true once n reaches a certain value. So I'm going to write to the side so the reader knows. This is when n is greater than or equal to 1. We're trying to prove this. So we need to make sure each of our steps are justified. So we take the expression, replace the lower order terms with equivalent higher order terms with the potential to need to say to the reader that the replacement that you made is only true for certain values of n. In particular, you want it to be that n is greater than or equal to some value. Why is this helpful? Well. I'm going to collect all the like terms on the right-hand side now, and I'm left with 9n squared. 
The left hand side remains n two n squared plus three n plus four. So what have I done? I have the function I started with two n squared plus three n plus four is less than or equal to a constant times n squared. In our definition, I will write down our definition here in symbols for us. It said there exists a C greater than zero and an N naught in the natural numbers such that for all N greater than or equal to N naught, our function F of N is less than or equal to C G of N. So our goal is to find for this particular example, our f of n is 2n squared plus 3n plus 4. So I'll highlight that to showcase. Our c is 9. And our n naught is the caveat we had to make along the way. So we've shown that we satisfied the definition. We found c and we found n naught. And because of those justifications we made with the inequalities, we know it's true for all n greater than or equal to some that n naught. So what we've done here is enough to show that therefore the given function 2n squared plus 3n plus 4 is in big O of n squared. Because what we did was mathematically justified steps, and we found the constants that we needed to find to make that claim.